First story, terror neighbors make our lives hell, returned the favor by getting them raided. As we found out that we'd be expecting, not one but two kids, we knew we had to move to a real house with more space. At the time we were still living in a one-bedroom studio one up from the ground floor. With its only entrance is a metal fire escape, stairs. Not ideal for a pregnant woman, let alone to live with two small babies. So, we found a privately leased house that was newly renovated and had all the room and a large garden we were looking for. Signed the lease and immediately collected the keys. As the owner drove off, the woman next door comes up to me, immediately demanding we not make noise before noon as her BF works nights and sleeps in and a whole bunch of other do's and don'ts. So right of the bat knew, trouble incoming. As the house was fully renovated and not much had to be done we were like don't poke the bear, we'll do the things that make noise afternoon. We moved in after two weeks and the whole street was warm and welcoming. My wife was almost due to give birth to my twin daughters, and some offer help with anything we needed, real kind people. They also told us about our neighbors. Nobody liked them, he was a big bully and got into arguments with everybody. Also were known as radio pirates as an illegal broadcasting on the radio with all Dutch bangers, this music is just terror on your ears and possibly used on terrorists on black sites, which went alongside them partying Thursday Sunday till 5 in the morning. Loud music, constant yelling, always drunken, etc. really something to look forward to when moving in, certainly with two babies on the way. The partying began immediately, full blast. Real classy for someone demanding to be quiet when the douchebag needs his beauty sleep. Then one day my Phil came to put new grass in, he has his trailer parked at the back of our houses which is a public space. Not according to him though, know that exact spot where the trailer full with grass sods, quite heavy stuff, was parked was his spot and we had to move the trailer. Not going to happen as I was not planning to walk all the way around the house with the sods. He gets angry right away and demanded me move it. I told him to go fuck himself. I was done with him already then and there, I'm also ginger so besides having no soul I do have a temper which is always in check until you provoke me repeatedly. Anyone who knows me will tell you that you really had to make an effort for that to happen, we went on working and the end of the day comes when my Phil wants to leave. Hooks up the trailer and bam, there was a douchebag, telling him off, yelling it's his spot and he better does not do this again or else. Mess with me all you want. I can handle it, but what you don't do is threaten my family. I ran outside and told him in no uncertain terms to back off or he'll be the sorry one. Total bluff on my side, yes I have that temper but I'm not impressively built and have no hidden fighting skills, I do fight dirty. He backs off, Phil leaves and I go inside where I find my wife crying. She got scared of him maybe doing something to her father and or me and this is something we don't need right now. Combined with hormones from being pregnant and you can paint that picture. So I'm even more pissed but had to promise not to act on anything. I won't, dear, not yet anyway. Time went on without any real incident and then came the time my wife goes into labor. Didn't go smooth and ended up having to deliver with a c-section, or whatever it's called, because daughter too was almost strangled by the umbilical cord. We had to stay three nights, excruciating nights due to a lot of things. Finally, we get to go home, family had put a giant sign in our front yard welcoming the babies. The sign was already up for a few days prior to coming home so our friendly neighbors definitely knew about it. But did they give a flying fuck? No, they did not. From the first night on they started to party and broadcasted their terror music, they started at noon and continued to until 5 or 6 in the morning. Classy. They also kept going for days, so it wasn't just Thursday Sunday, it was all week long in the next. So we were broken, hardly slept, one of our daughters suffered from heavy cramps combined with all the noise and her parents at the end of their wits so she cried a lot. And then I just had it. I researched some things on radio pirates, the laws and regulations, and on his large, 5 meters plus antenna in his backyard which was illegal in itself, but he used it to illegally broadcast on the radio which meant he had a lot of equipment to do so which was even more illegal and can even get you jailed, but at the very least they could seize it all and fine him big time. In the 1045k area. Now, I did not immediately turn him in but instead were looking for another house to lease first. This because I figured it wouldn't sit well with him and having a wife and two babies in the house alone during the day because I had to go to work. 
I hear you guys thinking, why not involve the police? Well, they are utterly useless in cases like this. We called once and what they did disturbs me to this day. They rang their doorbell and immediately started off by saying we called them about noise complaints. Yes, you read that right. No protection or whatsoever, just blatantly told them we were the reason they're there, told them to keep it down and that was it. They didn't even follow up with us or anything. As you can guess douchebag now was even more pissed and told me the next day, or yelled over the fence that separates our backyards that I really should not do that again, a threat yet again of which I told the police. I didn't report it the first time as I chalked that up to alpha male and heat of the moment. But without witnesses to corroborate, nothing could be done yet again. Some days later I walked out the front door and he just stepped out of his car. Came up to me demanding I cut back some of our ivy that grew on our side of the fence because it tangled in with his big ass antenna, he would be gone for some hours and I could come into his garden to cut back the ivy that grew through on their side. And then a light bulb went on above my head. I told him politely that I would do that immediately. Why? Because that gave me the opportunity to find out the make and model of this antenna to ascertain its signal strength, where the cables go exactly, and what kind of cables they were again to know the signal strength it handled. Also, it gave me a good view of the equipment he had, through the window so I could snap some photographs of it. This was the icing on the cake. Because in the meantime we did manage to find a new home and already had signed the lease so we would be gone in two weeks. Luckily we only had to paint some walls for the girl's room and furthermore just pack up our things and move them to the other house. So after I trimmed the ivy and collected my evidence I went online that night to find out the proper channels to report a broadcast pirate and which entity was tasked with catching said pirate. Turned out I had to call the telecom agency but also the police. Wasn't too happy with the latter but I remembered I have a nephew that works for the police, officially his area was immigration but knew enough colleagues that could help us and we could trust not to confront them again saying I was the one that sent them. That was extremely important for our safety when doing what I was doing. So I gave both the agency and the police all evidence I collected, pointed them to the frequencies he pirated so they could listen in. Then they started a neighborhood investigation, which wasn't really necessary but this was to cover our asses to make it look like he got caught by accident because they had an active investigation in our area. You never know what he can learn from legal documents and such. We asked them to wait with the raid yes they raid pirates houses, preferably in the early hours of the day because of his beautiful sleep rendering him incapable of fleeing or hide evidence, etc. We moved two weeks later and they raided him two days after we moved. All of his equipment, computers, radio, cell phones, and his car were seized. He left in cuffs, his wife slash GF did too, for making a big scene and tried to interfere. All of which was live reported to me by one of my ex-neighbors who were equally ecstatic about this. It turned out, this wasn't the first time he got caught but his third time, his car had no insurance on it and his mo failed. This would normally have no big consequence because he didn't drive it while rated, but they had the guy surveilled on for a week and that definitely meant he was seen driving it while not having insurance and valid mo. He was fined somewhere around 30k euros, went to jail for 12 weeks and everything seized was destroyed except the car. His GF had I do 40 some hours of community service. They had to sell the house, which made for very happy neighbors as they too were over and done with them. As I said, I do fight, but very dirty. You have to really make an effort for me to get to that point, they did and suffered. Over a year later when shopping for groceries I encountered them. With the foulest of looks, if looks could kill I'd be a smoldering heap of ash. But nothing more than that. Damn folks, kinda surprised about all the appreciation. Gold and silver awards, wholesome, masterpiece, helpful, bravo grand and so many upvotes. Thank you all, kind people. I honestly do not know what I can do with gold or silver but I promise you I'll spend it by giving back. This shit period in our lives turns into something better this way. Second story, harass me treat me like crap that's going to cost you 5 years salary. First, some background. A bit over 6 months prior to the start of this story, we had a change up at the company I worked for. The old owner was a great guy that was retiring and handing the company off to his son, a real pos just out of business school type. The son, with the mentality that the company is now his, went about restructuring, 
namely reassigning teams to different projects, and leaving those that remained in their old positions to pick up double, if not triple, the workload. He did this all in the name of saving a little money. Unfortunately, my department, safety slash engineering, of which I was the team lead, was not spared from this effort. In the end, I had it out with the boss and department head, ultimately costing the company three months of my entire department working 80 plus hour weeks, and forcing a huge year-end bonus to be paid out to us. Unfortunately, after my initial meeting with the new boss, E the son, he took a liking to me, in a really bad way. Essentially he really liked me, and wanted to go out with me, or sleep with me, or however, you want to put it. He even enlisted his friends and secretaries to help him. It went on for months, just blatant sexual harassment. They even made comments about me losing my late husband, that I should just get back on the horse, so to speak. I kept everything, every email, every voicemail, and went to my best friend who happens to be a really good lawyer, a contract lawyer, to be exact, so not exactly their area of expertise, but they knew enough to help. This friend drafted a letter to the boss, essentially a stop or we're going to start a big case over this kind of thing, and yeah everything stopped. However, I was then moved from working in office to a work from home arrangement. I knew what was coming. They were going to do their best to get rid of me, so I started documenting everything. But as luck would happen I received an email chain from the bosses, a good friend of mine in the office who was in the email chain added me to the CC list. And wouldn't you know, it was back and forth communication of them discussing how they would get rid of me and pin the blame on me. The email chain was just disgusting. They hated me so badly and wanted me gone, but because of my contract, they would have to buy me out. But being the cheapskates they are you know they wanted me gone for free, so the company bosses started a campaign to try and torment me. They first tried to say that because now I work from home they were required to install cameras in my home office to make sure I was being productive, luckily that did not work, you have to love contracts. They also tried assigning an impossible workload to me, but luckily my team and I were almost like family and they picked up the slack. After three months of this crap, I get an email and a phone call from the HR department saying I was getting laid off indefinitely because there was just no work for me. This was complete bullshit given that we had several dozen projects we were working on. On a side note, in Ontario, there is no such thing as a layoff, as, in the court's eyes, being laid off is considered an active dismissal, which is essentially the same as being fired after this conversation with HR. I call my lawyer friend, almost in tears just shouting look what they are doing to me. Help! She calms me down and tells me this is such a good thing, we have so much evidence against them. I had already forwarded and printed everything off that was sent to me, and it was lucky I did because a scant few hours after I was laid off my computer was remotely wiped clean, everything was gone, leaving just a blank desktop. When I called the HR department to get copies of all my filed complaints, what do you know, everything was gone. In their place was a bunch of bullshit reprimands that never happened, that I never signed or saw, dating months and months back, and all signed by the new boss, despite the fact that they were dated before he ever took control of the company. It was clear they were total bullshit, but I got copies of everything to add to my stack of records. I texted all my old colleagues to let them know what was happening, and that I am basically gone. Like I said earlier, we were like family, and with me, on the way out they started looking for better employment. Not only that, but they contacted all their friends who worked for the company to do the same. I was laid off on a Monday, and on Thursday I walked into the office with my employment lawyer. I swear, the main secretary was on the phone to secure the second she saw me walk in, and they were at the door in a matter of a minute. My lawyer simply handed her a legal document, a summons to meet for mediation at his office on the next Friday. During the following week, I received so many calls and text messages from the bosses, friends, secretaries, and people I knew in the office to just be friends with the owner, to just drop it, and that they wanted to bring me back and forget about everything, like hell I was going back to such a hostile work environment. Friday finally comes and into my lawyer's office, my former boss walks in with a squad of four of his lawyers to settle the matter. And off the bat, he offers me three months severance to end all of this because I didn't have any evidence to rebut the fake paperwork they had on file. At this point, my lawyer starts to bring out all the paperwork we had, 
namely copies of every complaint I had ever filed which were all signed by the bosses, HR, and myself. Luckily for our case, I had made sure to take a copy of each complaint when it was written up. They didn't think I had anything? Oh, boy were they wrong. My lawyer made the case that in court it'd be obvious that all the paperwork they had on their end were forgeries, nothing was signed by me, and he pointed out that there were dates with the boss's signature where he wasn't in the country, let alone working for the company yet. At that point, the boss and his lawyers went to speak privately. After about half an hour they came back with a much better offer, a full year's salary. But my lawyer was like nah, we'll just go with what the contract says plus go for damages in court. Given the recent changeover at the company, the lawyers seemed to know they couldn't afford this going to court, not to mention it would be so bad for the company's reputation. So they basically rolled over and asked what do you want? We demanded 5 years salary plus the average bonus I would have made for each year plus all the legal fees paid. It was a big big win. But it didn't end there. I got a taste of blood and wanted more. I made phone calls to several companies where I had contacts and found jobs for every member of my team, and several members of other teams. By the end of a week, the company lost 10 of its most talented people. Not to mention most of those people had friends and colleagues that ended up following them to their new employers. The fallout was pretty bad. Before all of this, they had the pick of the litter when new university students graduated. But now, because they lost almost all of their senior people, they had no one to mentor new employees. Plus word got out fast how they treat workers like crap, so no one with any talent would even think of getting near the company. As of today, the company is just a shell of its former self. It's still big, but it bleeds money. They also now have a problem with permanent staffing and are paying out the nose to hire subcontractors. Let's just say they don't make money like they used to. In fact, they have not started any new projects in something like 9 months. If something isn't done on the side of management to improve things fast, they will likely be going bankrupt in the very near future.